All right. Well, hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Monterey Bay Aquarium live All here right. on... Well, hey, oh, no, you're going to hear an echo. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I forgot oh, to no. turn the volume off on Twitch. Okay, it's fine. Oh. Everything's okay. What? I thought there were two Emilys. There, this, I mean... Oh, that's why I got out of the water. I was suddenly things? very concerned. Would there be worse things in the world, Patrick? Oh, that's true. That's very true. I could use, I could use some more Emilys. <laughs> um, hey, everyone. Okay, hey, everyone. Uh, welcome. Hi. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Monterey Bay Aquarium Live here on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, my name is, is Emily. I'm the one that you Emily heard number one. double of before. Uh, in fact, there is only one of me. Some days I wish there were two to get so much more done. Um, but uh, it's me. It's Emily. I'm part of the social media team here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Um, and I am the one swimming around in little circles in the water right now uh, with the Jossum hat on. Monty Ray uh, is, is here on, on her Animal Crossing Island, Monty Ray Bay Island, or Mon Monterey Bay Island, I think, is what we'll what figure we it out so at we'll some point. We'll figure it one day. We'll figure uh, out how to pronounce it at some point. One, one day. Uh, but not alone ever. Uh, we've got my good friend, my colleague, my coworker, my buddy, my pal, my Patrick, uh, tuning in with us this afternoon. Patrick, Patrick, yeah. Patrick. We're in the water. We're in the water. We're diving. This is so <laughs> exciting, everybody. Around. We're in the water going splish, go. splash, taking a bath in Animal Crossing. That's right. Hey, everybody. My name's Patrick. I'm uh, another half of the social media team. Certainly not the better half. And uh, we're currently swimming around here in the ocean, uh, free as uh, two turkey fish can be, free as those birds out there. Um, Emily has just figured out how to dive down, and she has, uh, she has already found something potentially oh. oh oh my goodness gracious <gasps> patrick what do we get what do we get is Look it a garden eel friend it's a spotted garden eel spotted garden eel coming right up everybody that is so exciting oh i uh, like the have... pun I, what is it it says it i got unspotted. a spotted garden eel was it unspotted before i saw it nicely oh, done. nicely so, done animal crossing here, I'll turn I'll turn back around here just to the front just to, just to say hello. Uh, thank you so much for being there, everyone, over on YouTube, over on uh, Twitch as well. Um, this is a very, very exciting update for us here at the aquarium because we have not only new fishes like the spotted garden eel that uh, Emily just found, but there are hosts of invertebrates, so many really cool critters that we're going to be able to uh, dive around and explore with just very quickly. Um, since we are uh, representatives of the Monterey Bay Aquarium, we do want to let you know that if you are actually out snorkeling and diving, uh, please do not uh, dive down, grab up critters, and show them off yes. uh, to the air to uh, any sort of audience. There is no audience out there. These animals need to stay underwater. Uh, leave it to the professional collectors out there um, who are able to go out and uh, bring these animals over to an aquarium near you so you can uh, take a look at them. Or if you're out in the wild, uh, spend a whole lot of time vibing with them, taking a closer look at them, uh, but uh, leave them in place if you would so please. Uh, that's that's the quick little PSA that we had to get out there out of the way. Hey, great job, Emily. Got hey. it. Garden eel. You got it. Yay. Um, yeah, so for uh, those of you who also play Animal Crossing, uh, you know that an update hit. Uh, it was technically today, but also technically last night. Um, and that includes diving. And so we thought that we would uh, come hang out and uh, go diving here and explore and uh, do all of these cool things and, and see what we can find. And Patrick, look! Oh, uh, sorry. I'm underwater right now. Um, <laughs> kind of crying a little bit uh, because uh, you got the anemone first. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. But Let's talk about this anemone. Let's... By the way, you're supposed to keep your anemones close uh, and your fronds and closer. And your fronds closer. Well, your fronds, good... clo <laughs> fronds close, your anemones closer. Yeah, your fronds close, anemones closer. We have lots Look of fronds. Oh, the anemone of my anemone is my frenemy. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, we have just been running around grabbing stuff and not really talking about anything. Patrick, I feel like we should maybe, I don't know. Should we explore first and just keep on diving and, and talk about that? Or should we talk you about know, the animals maybe, as we Maybe catch we them? should. You know what, Emily, if, if you just want to, uh, <laughs> here, if you just want to swim Hold around. On, Patrick, I do have to point out because it was just really funny. Uh, people might have seen uh, yeah. someone <laughs> running behind us on the horizon there. 
um, uh, one of our one of our good friends and one of the mods over on our Twitch channel, Sarah, has uh, been diligently uh, clamming this afternoon and, and making fish bait for us so that uh, when we're done diving here, we can go uh, for a second attempt at, uh, at finding a mola mola uh, on our island. Um, but, but that's who you see running around in the background there. Hi, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah, thank whole, you, Sarah. A whole bunch of can W's get, in the chat. Yeah, a whole bunch of W's in the chat. Can get some dubs in the chat for Sarah. for Sarah over on YouTube? Let's get some. <laughs> let's get some dubs in the chat as well for Sarah uh, doing, doing uh, just such an important, uh, important job there in the background, making sure that we have plenty of fish bait um, <laughs> for uh, potentially finding a mola mola. And also, someone just said Emily in the chat. I don't know if you can confirm, but at 4 mm. p.m. apparently the vampire squid is a potential Wait, arrival. What? I just saw that in the chat. I'm over I did here on not Twitter. know this. I'm trying to tweet <gasps> about us playing, but I heard Vampire what? Squid after 4 p.m. in the what? chat. I'm going to scroll up and see what? who uttered that blasphemy. Somebody, let let us know if you said Vampire Squid shows up after 4 p.m. That's what I, know, I heard. I'm scrolling That's back through I the saw. chat. I'm trying to find it. Who said it? Oh. Yeah, Magnus, Somebody. Magnus the Radical over on uh, over Magnus on Magnus the Radical. I think it's rare. Haven't found it yet. Okay, thank you, Magnus. Okay. Oh boy, that's exciting. Do you know exciting. if that's Northern Hemisphere or Southern Hemisphere? Wait, mm -hmm. Vampire Squid is five p.m. Sarah's con. Wait, no, four. Oh my gosh, I'm very confused. Yeah, four to nine. Four to nine. Four to nine p.m. Okay, for now, Vampire Squid, everybody. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> double checking Vampire Squid from shore or Vampire Squid diving. Because I think vampire squid from shore fishing. Maybe. I would imagine. Possibly. Right? I don't know. Because I do know for a fact, Patrick, that you can catch an octopus while we're diving here. That's amazing. So um did yes. did we wanna yeah, I mean, I guess we should just swim around <laughs> and see about all the cool little <laughs> animals that we have. Everything out there. First. But uh, this is very exciting, everybody, and thank you so much for oh, spending your so your Friday the third with all of us yeah. uh, here. Um I'm just um uh, I'm just going to tread water, Emily. If you just want to swim around, I'm going to do some tweeting and some Instagram. Okay, I'm going to. Well, so I see live. more bubbles over here. So there's something else. So I'm going to dive down and uh, see what it is. All right, go for it. Let's see what we get. Oh, another sea anemone. Um, so a lot of people know sea anemones uh, because of the movie Finding Nemo. Uh, that's where you get those uh, clownfish living in sea anemones, also called anemone fish. Um, hence you know, why they live in anemones. Um, but I, I, I really love what they included in that movie um, when Marlin, Nemo's father, had uh, Nemo brushing up against the tentacles of this sea anemone. So sea anemones are a cnidarian. Um, cnidarians include animals like sea anemones, but also jellyfish. Um, so they have these stinging cells in those tentacles um, that uh, can fire off and, and inject a, a venom into creatures. Uh, but they are also covered in a mucus, and uh, that's how they can chemically tell uh, if something is the same as it or different than it. And if it's different than it, then it will trigger those little nematocysts to fire and to sting something. Um, but if it's the same as it, uh, like another one of its tentacles, um, or another sea anemone of the same species, it won't sting it because it has that same mucus, those chemical signatures in the mucus. So clownfish, what they do uh, is they kind of rub themselves up against uh, the anemone's tentacles and they get that mucus all over their bodies so that when they swim into the anemone, it doesn't sting them, but say a bigger predatory fish comes in chasing that clownfish, uh, it's going to sting that other fish because it doesn't have that mucus on it. Uh, so when Marlin is telling Nemo to brush uh, it is exactly what uh, clownfish are, are doing out there. They are brushing away against, rubbing up against those tentacles there uh, so that they get that mucus on their bodies and they won't get stung. So uh, there's your, uh, there's one, one fun anemone fact uh, for you today. One well, fun anemone fact. Well, I, can f I can fill in another anemone fact. Uh, yeah, go for uh, it. I don't know. I'm over on Twitter. I don't know what the response is in the chat. I assume their minds are blown. Oh my goodness. Another look at all those anemone. gifted gifted subs oh my gosh right now from Topher. Topher, oh thank my. you so much thank you Topher. over on twitch just just 
doling out the gifted subs like they're going out of style. Um, <laughs> but uh, one one uh, one little fact I just want to point out, and I, I'm glad you left this one for me, Emily, is that uh, anemones are one of those animals that have what's known as a gastrovascular cavity, uh, meaning that there is a one way in and one way out. <laughs> so when you are around an anemone, um, and this happens with uh, anemones of mine and enemies uh, as well, um, they can be very foul mouthed, uh, but if you happen to be around an anemone that appears rather potty mouthed, well, you'd be entirely 100% accurate in that um, estimation. So, uh, one way in, one way out, gastrovascular cavity, when you're looking at the mouth of the anemone, that is also <laughs> where uh, digestion will occur and uh, be retrieved from. So, now you know, gastrovascular cavity, word of the day there uh, you for go. this Friday the 3rd. Um, I just realized <laughs> that uh, my stream deck was not plugged in, so my pun button did not work when I tried to hit it. No. Just ta tap the puns. We must be at least at five or six puns. Uh, anemone of anemone is my frond. <laughs> uh, keep your anemones close. Uh, or your, fr your fronds closer, your anemones closer. Um, it's going to work now. Oh, that's oh, at least beans. two or three. Okay. Keep on pun. talking, Patrick, because I need pun to. Button uh, down. Oh, okay. Pun button well, is down. Pun, but I know how to fix it this time. Okay, pun button is down. Um, okay, so let me see. Okay, I've just tweeted, uh, and I'll Instagram story here in a <laughs> second. Here, I'll swim. I'll swim over to the camera and uh, talk to the folks. Um, so, some more anemone facts, if, if, in case you were looking for uh, some, some more anemone facts, things that are fun. Uh, so, uh, in our area, if you were to go to the tide pools here in the Monterey Bay, there is a type of anemone that is known as the aggregating anemone, and they clone themselves. So, um, they'll have many, many, many clones all next to each other. But uh, individuals that come from, oh, we got a hype train over on Twitch, everybody. Yeah. Choo choo, all aboard the hype train, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for all of the bits. Oh, we got 500 bits coming in there. That's incredible. Um, okay, so for the folks that are watching on, on YouTube and Twitch right now, so uh, you'll have clones of anemones, and what ends up happening is that uh, individuals that are coming from separate clones will eventually meet up in certain zones, and then they'll go to battle with each other. They don't want to have, um, they'll, they'll fight for space, basically, with other uh, organisms and also with other anemones, and what they'll develop along the edge of their, of their bodies are special packed with uh, stinging cell little sacs known as acorhagi, uh, acorhagus being one, acorhagi being um, the plural. And these are just loaded with stinging cells that will shoot out and stab at, um, at neighboring anemones. And so if you're ever out in the tide pools or if you're out uh, scuba diving, if you're uh, near areas where you have multiple overlapping clone bands of anemones uh, and cnidarians, you might actually see zones where it looks like some of the individuals are bleached out, or uh, if you look closer, you'll see that they have little, like looking like little popped uh, sacks, or if you have a, maybe like a, like a pill in one of those plastic capsules, it looks like one of those popped caps along the edge of the, of the tentacle ring of the anemones, and that's what they use to battle other anemones. So acor haggis and acor haggi. Uh, another word of the day for anemones specialized go. stinging structures that they use to defend their territory against other uh, other individuals. Um, Emily, we're being yes. asked in the chat by quite a few folks if we've met uh, the, our otter friends. Pascal no. yet. No. Have we? No, we have not. So um, right before uh, we started streaming was the first time that Patrick and I jumped into the water. So we have not met Pascal yet. We wanted to, uh, we wanted to discover everything with all of you. Um, so we're, we haven't discovered, uh, Pascal yet. We have it. Oh, Patrick, look. What? It's a little moon jelly. It's a moon jelly. I caught a moon jelly too. <gasps> well... Now to find a sun peanut butter fish. Nah, nice one. <laughs> nice. Well, you know, I mean, that would be a little dangerous if it was a sunfish here, because wait. sunfish would be eating eating the moon jellies. Yeah, yeah, that's something we should talk about is we didn't catch our mola mola on the last stream, but uh, if there are moon jellies in the water, that's a good sign. Here, here, wait, wait, wait. wait. We can do we can do double. No, I can't show off. Oh, we you can't, can't show, show off it things off? when you're in the water. Oh, okay. Okay, well, I had a moon jelly. Uh, Emily, quick moon jelly facts for the folks 
moon jelly facts um Nidarians, just like all the scene enemies that we have been catching so far um and uh you have a lot of different species of moon jellies depending on uh where you are in the world uh at the aquarium, most of ours are going to be Aurelia arita or Aurelia labiatas. Um, and uh, for all oh, you got Whoa. sea grapes. What I get? Sea grapes. Can't let those go sour. Boom. Well, Patrick, before you put them away. Uh, oh no. Oh no, you put them away. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, back to moon jelly facts. We'll find. We'll find more sea grapes. Um, back to moon jelly facts. Um, moon jellies, uh, they can have, uh, so most of the time when you look at them, they have those little horseshoe shapes up on the top of their bell. And most of the time you see four of them, but they can actually have multiple, uh, uh, m like, I mean, obviously four is multiple, uh, <laughs> but they can have, <laughs> oh man, uh, but they can have more than just those four little horseshoes, uh, that you see up there. So those are going to be their, their, basically their gut up there as well as their gonads uh, that you see where those little horseshoe shapes are. Um, but they can have, you know, four, five, six, seven. I've even seen all, all the way up to nine on a, a moon jelly before. Um, but that can either be caused by moon jellies actually regrowing parts of their body. So if a sea turtle comes along and takes a little nibble out of a moon jelly, uh, it can actually regrow parts of its body there. Um, so sometimes when they're regrowing themselves, they'll regrow an extra little uh, gut gonad. Uh, and then sometimes it's just caused by a, a genetic mutation. So sometimes you just see moon jellies that, uh, that just have extra of those. Um, so it's pretty neat. Anytime that you're watching our moon jelly cam, keep an eye out because every now and then you'll see one that has more than just those four little horseshoe shapes on top there oh we um yes uh, emily yes we're at a level three a level hype train three over on twitch train? by the way so everybody's super Choo -choo. excited about moon jelly gonads but uh yeah. i didn't want to interrupt but i have a barnacle you do have I a barnacle have barnacle buds oh uh, are, are you gonna share your favorite fun fact about barnacles well what do you mean emily is that a leading <laughs> question I, I, I mean if I know the fact that you're going to share about them, then yes, I guess About the so. fact that they have living tissue inside their shell or the other one? The other one, but we can talk oh, about the, the living one. tissue well, inside so let's, talk, let's, let's talk about that. <laughs> let's, talk quick, about the no, let's talk about the first one. Let's talk about the first one. So, everybody, you're looking at a barnacle right now. Barnacles are uh, some... Uh, uh, should we head to shore and, I, or, and then we can show it off in a different way? No, nah, it's fine. Um, so... I have an acorn barnacle, and it says, will it grow into an oak barnacle? Good job, uh, Animal Crossing writing team. Um, but uh, so one of the questions that, uh, or okay, so a barnacle looks very strange. Uh, and what they actually are is imagine a crab that pile drives its face into the reef and then cements its face down on said reef and grows a shell around its body using its legs to kick out through the opening to grab up passing food on the current. So basically, if you are a barnacle larva, you're swimming out there in the open ocean, you find an area where there are other barnacles, you pile drive yourself into the reef, cement your head to the bottom, and then kick your legs furiously uh, around over and over again to be able to grab your food. And so if you are then uh, an acorn barnacle that is looking to reproduce, um, I believe they are hermaphroditic. Uh, let's see, depends on the barnacle, I suppose. Um, let me look that up real quick. But so <laughs> um, when you're cemented in place, you can't move around to fertilize uh, another, um, another barnacle. And so what you might do uh, is develop a really incredible adaptation, which is the longest penis in proportion to body size in the uh, animal world. <laughs> Uh, that slithers out much like a little worm or a snake and then taps around uh, and can go quite the long ways away. I think uh, over nine times the body length of the barnacle uh, away from it to go try to find other dating opportunities outside of your own little small space there. Um, oh, I no. This is, I, I was I trying this to... Is, this isn't this isn't Bob. There you go. Nice. So we've got we've got barnacle buds and this is actually, let's say, a, an appropriate distance away for these two barnacles to potentially become barnacle buds um, with uh, that that um, 
with that particular adaptation. So I don't think this is Bafka content. I think this is this is uh, this is a an inspiring story of love triumphing over difficult circumstances. <laughs> um, but so yeah, so when you see a barnacle, just know that uh, barnacles are the organisms with the longest. Uh, uh, reproductive organ in proportion to their body size and that is how barnacles being cemented in one location are able to spread out the gene pool and be able to continue to reproduce and it also will explain if you're ever over in the tide pools and you see um, what looks like a worm emerging from a barnacle that is actually the barnacle itself so um, um patrick i think, I we, I I don't, think we covered that fact i wow. i don't know if you have seen uh the, the chat so far but um uh, just just to point it out just, that just gives a uh, bde a, a whole new meaning it's it, it's barnacle it, it now. does yes um <laughs> and uh we'll, we'll probably we'll probably never mention this ever again everybody but this is yours to know those of you who have made it to uh however long this is 21 minutes into this uh, youtube video or this twitch stream um, that is now something that you know. Uh, and yes, I did look it up. Acorn <laughs> barnacles are indeed hermaphroditic, so they're both male and female, but they cannot self-fertilize. Um, so that is the that is the main issue there. Uh, okay, we can move along, <laughs> I believe. Okay. Uh, so anything else about barnacles that we want to mention? I mean, other than the fact that um, essentially barnacles, when there are larvae, uh, or when they're larvae, are basically huge nostrils trying to sniff out where other barnacles are going to be uh, when they try to hang out next to other barnacles that is known as being a gregarious uh, species when you like to land in the same zone as the rest of your of your organisms, which is similar to abalone, which we're also told is in the game. So we might be looking for some abalone a little bit later. Uh, but uh, OK, moving along from that particular topic of special interest, oh. uh, Emily, what did you want to say about sea grapes? <gasps> Wait, hold I don't, on. No, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about sea grapes when we find what them again. Have? I don't uh, a, a sea pineapple. A sea pineapple? A sea pineapple. What is that common name? Uh, that, I am looking it up I, right I now. I don't know what a sea pineapple <laughs> is, but I'm sure I know what animal it is. Is it Thank supposed you, to be like names. a sponge? Hold on. OK. Dear Google, please talk to me. Oh, it's a sea squirt. It's a sea squirt. Oh, cool. That's so cool. Oh, I can't believe they actually have sea squirts in the game. That's incredible. Wow. <gasps> That's so cool. That's really cool. So um, for, for those of you who, who don't know what a, a sea squirt is, it is actually um, us as, as humans, a, a fairly close relative because it belongs in the same phylum that we do. Uh, so it belongs in the phylum Chordata. So this little sea squirt here is your very, 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 very distant cousin that we are looking at right now. Yeah, and sea squirts are, um, so they're, get ready for a whole bunch of different names in a row because they're tunicates, they're ascidians, <laughs> Um, and uh, their pelagic counterparts, the open ocean counterparts of uh, tunicates that are on the on the bottom instead of ascidians, they're uh, thaliasians and salps and doliolids. Uh, so many different Which, words to describe can, can this we just, squishy. Yeah, can we just give a shout out to the word doliolid because it's yes. the best word in the English language to say. Absolutely, doliolid. Uh, such a good, such a good word. Um, but so uh, there's um, so there's an entire world of squishy organism in the ocean that uh, very few people will ever um, really get up close enough to really tell the difference. Um, a lot of sea squirts, uh, not the one that Emily has just found, the sea pineapple, um, but a lot of sea squirts look very similar to sponges or the carpets of bryozoans, which are other encrusting organisms that cover the reef. And here in Monterey, we have loads of different species of uh, marine uh, tunicates that carpet the seafloor. Um, and, but there are others like the one that Emily has that are a little bit more clusters, a little bit more uh, up off the bottom. Um, and uh, the individuals are much larger and things uh, like that might be light bulb tunicates that we have in the Monterey Bay uh, area, which are a delicious fare for flatworms and nudibranchs. Uh, and, but so these sea squirts, like Emily was mentioning, when they are larvae, they have essentially the beginnings of a spinal cord uh, which makes them yeah. urochordates. They are the most uh, vertebrate of the invertebrates. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, they're yeah. a really close yeah, relative that, to us. There was a, a great question over on, on Twitch asking, um, because they are part of this phylum chordate, does that mean that they have bones or uh, a central nervous system? And, and what chordate means is basically that you have a notochord. Um, so, so that is... Um, that is uh, the definition of being part of that phylum chordate chordata um, is that you have a notochord you don't necessarily have bones yet uh, but you have a notochord so it is this kind of uh, primitive uh, beginning of a backbone um, so that that is uh, that is why these tunicates are more closely related to us than say that jellyfish is closely related to us there Exactly right. And uh, Emily, if you yes. want to kind of keep going for a little bit here, I've realized that I have yet to let the folks know over on Instagram that we are live. So I'm about to let the folks know that we're live on Instagram by right doing on. an Instagram story. And everybody on the stream is going to hear the behind the scenes right now <laughs> because this is me letting everybody know that we are live on YouTube and Twitch playing some Animal Crossing with the new diving update, everybody. Woo! Swipe up that link, and we'll see you soon. There you go. All right. So if you hear that on the Instagram, y'all just heard it here live. That's some that's the behind the scenes making of social media that uh, you can expect from this particular. <gasps> live What'd you find? What'd you find? What'd you find? Trick. What'd you find? What'd you find? What'd you find? Come look. Come I'm see. I'm coming over. I'm coming over. I'm coming over. I, uh, I can't swim fast. <laughs> oh, no. I believe. Just keep on pressing A. Just keep on pressing no, A. No, but I have my phone in the other hand. Put your phone away. <laughs> no, I'm I'm the Instagram. Okay, okay fine. Okay, here we go. Fine. Uh, turning around. <gasps> Octo friend. Little Octo friend. It's a mollusk. You know how fond we are of mollusks. We uh, are, especially because here. this was the first organism that you see in this video game. Yep, absolutely. Mollusks represent, and we have a little octopus friend here, little mollusk buddy. I got an octopus. It can give four hugs at once. Oh, that's Aww. very good. It can also give you uh, three times the love with its three hearts. And uh, yeah, so this little octopus friend here, a mollusk, just like uh, most of the shells that you are finding up on the beach before this update happened. Um, again, first animal that you see in Animal Crossing is indeed a mollusk. A um, little weird. <laughs> that will, I'm just going to say it now, Patrick. It's a little weird that we caught an octopus when we also have three octopus neighbors on our island. Um, you know what? Uh, it'll just be a little bit of a family reunion, you know? <laughs> I wonder what would happen if we... Uh, uh, yeah, someone in the chat just said it to you. If we gave the octopus Wait. to one of our octopus neighbors. Oh, no. Positronics said that they gifted Octavian an octopus. What happened? <laughs> well, yeah, we want to know what happens because it just feels... feels weird. It does feel slightly weird, especially because uh, I don't know if they'll recognize each other. This octopus model that you have there being very lifelike and true uh, true to uh, nature and uh, the octopuses having uh their mouth uh, siphon be completely <laughs> inaccurate from a biological standpoint so i believe that the the villagers and the octopuses much of must have branched off evolutionarily a few million I, years ago i don't know i'm kind of with uh, editor deb there um uh, again if you if any of you watch a uh, uh, game theorists over on on YouTube, um, they made an, an episode about Animal Crossing, and and this kind of a uh, this <laughs> this is uh, just more uh, more fuel to their theory, <laughs> right right here that it's just all in our heads. These uh, Animal Crossing characters, oh no, oh no, <laughs> but uh, it's okay. We aren't gonna get that deep today. Uh, instead, we're just going to hang out here on this beautiful day on our Animal Crossing Island with our octopus friend and not think about how we have octopus neighbors. Yeah, we're uh, not we're not yeah. going to get too deep. We're going to dive just below surface level yeah. to go find yeah, more, exactly. more of those clues there. Exactly. Um, another thing about the octopus that we just found here, uh, we've mentioned quite a few different octopus facts on the stream. But one thing just I wanted to point out, this particular octopus, uh, if, you if you recall, there are two different types. There's serrate and inserrate octopuses. Serrate octopuses would be things like the Dumbo octopus, the Flapjack octopus, and a close relative to the vampire squid, which is in its own little world, but uh, with the little siri that they have, little hairs that they have on their arms. This particular one is an inserrate octopus, 
with the fact that it doesn't have the little hairs mm -hmm. on its uh, tentacles and mm -hmm. it has suckers and you usually find them in shallow and they are kind of more your quote unquote classic octopus. So, in, oh, it changed color. I know. I was just looking at that. Whoa. I've been mesmerized. How do they change color, Emily? How do so they change they have, color? So these, they have these amazing specialized cells called chromatophores um, in their skin, which are basically a little pigment filled sacs. You can almost think of it like a little pigment filled balloon that they have underneath their skin there. And as those balloons expand and contract, um, it can actually change the color of an octopus and, and many cephalopods as well. So uh, squids and cuttlefish, they all have those oh, look, it changed color again. Oh, it's so cool. That's so cool. It's so, so cool. Um, so yeah, so they'll change color um, based on their surroundings to camouflage themselves. They'll use it for communication. Um, they'll flash different patterns on their bodies. Um, but Patrick, another thing that I was I was noticing here on the sides, it, it almost looks like it has those like kind of two spots just below its eyeballs. There. Oh, see, I don't have the I don't have the game up big enough to be oh, able to okay. see that level of resolution. But yeah, I can uh, maybe yeah behind its eyeballs there, maybe a little two spots there. So it might be like a little two spot octopus here that we have. Could yeah, common octopus as well as another yeah. guess. Uh, I would also say we could say it's a day octopus if we wanted to. Yeah, since because it was active it's active out in during the day. the day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at it change color again. That's um, so cool. <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, they have these uh, the, the chromatophores in their skin there that are allowing them to do this. Um, so uh, you know you'll you'll see different colors in different octopus species, um, like our giant Pacific octopus. Um, it'll it can go from like pale pale snow white all the way to this vibrant vibrant red color um but like our 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 day octopus looks a little bit more like this where you have kind of that kind of uh tan skin they'll change like white and yellow and brown and yeah so you, different different colors different species oh, it's so cool to watch it change color yeah. here in the game too Super cool. Um, and that, that camouflage is something that cephalopods, uh, which are the head-footed uh, mollusks, uh, cephalo being head, pod being foot. Um, these cephalopods, that color change is really one of the key characteristics of many of these uh, many of these species that you find here, especially in the shallow waters Wait, there. Pa um, Patrick, and then, Patrick sorry, I, don't, I, I, don't, I want you to finish that sentence, but I just saw a comment over there on Twitch. Editor Deb said that you can place seaweed in your homes on the floor <gasps> what oh my gosh and the floor outside too what is it the same as the seaweed that we have on the beach or no no it's gonna be different it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be like the actual seaweed that we can collect here in the water get oh my gosh out. oh my god okay everybody buckle up because we about to get real nerdy in the phycology here <laughs> our entire house is just going to be a phycologist's paradise which is fitting because monty ray is modeled after our uh, executive director julie packard who studied phycology uh, that's what it when she was in college so she would absolutely absolutely love this so uh, yep th that's my my new plan is to make her an algae house so um oh my gosh oh my gosh i'm so excited okay patrick I, i'm so sorry to interrupt but it was just so exciting what no, were, what no, were you that's, saying that's great i've just decided I, I figured out how to splash myself in the face with water and that's <laughs> my preferred game me game well, mechanic i mean um, you can also um more importantly here patrick uh, you know, we're all about conservation and, uh, you know, respecting the, the four R's of uh, reduce, reuse, recycle, and uh, and, and so, um, and, and refuse. Uh, but, but Patrick, uh, yeah. <laughs> the easiest way that we can do that, of course, uh, is just physically here. We're swimming in some salt water, so we can just return that right into the ocean there. Can, oh, there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> so on the right, on the right, you can see the agitation of the water cycle of the water uh, leaving the ocean and becoming vaporized into the atmosphere. Yeah. You can see there the rain <laughs> on the left returning. Um, this is the kind of uh, stellar, uh, well, sea stellar uh, gameplay that you can expect out of the these two uh, marine <laughs> biologists turned gamers here um and uh yeah you know i feel like you should you should like and subscribe over on youtube uh, for more of this type of video and i feel like on twitch you know throw us some subs uh 
some bits, you know, support the type of content, this type of content where it's uh, uh, whatever the whatever this is going on right now after we've just talked about octopuses for a little bit. Um, this is pro gamer emoting. I agree, at Fruit Bat. I really think that we Hold should on. get some dubs in the chat. Maybe Hold some, on. I'll, uh, sh some I'll show emotes. you the, the, the real pro gamer uh, move here. Let's see here. We zoom in on that, and then we can get the emote go there you go oh, enhance yeah. <laughs> this is um uh i mean i feel like i've peaked professionally <laughs> at this moment. Th thank you thank you for all of the w's in the chat there Twitch. thanks everyone i appreciate, no, I really appreciate that. it <laughs> uh thanks as well to everybody over on youtube that is uh, currently supporting us and watching <laughs> over on youtube we've got about 52 people um, thank you spending some time with us uh, yeah we've this got is... almost 200 people on twitch thank you so much for being there as well and um uh, that was a good job there emily i really feel like we accomplished something <laughs> i feel like well, this is on par for um for one of our friday streams here <laughs> oh, oh i got double more barnacle barnacles buds. um Okay, and so just by the way, one thing that we should clear up, uh, as always, um, whenever we have an octopus around, uh, we say octopuses. Uh, the correct plural is octopodes because it's a Greek word, octopus, uh, that gave us uh, the word octopus that picked up a Latinized ending. Uh, we say octopuses because that's usually how uh, usually how English handles those particular words. Octopodes is the quote most correct plural. An octopi is also used and just fine mm -hmm. to describe how many uh, different octopus you might have in front of you. If you've got many octopuses, octopi is just fine to communicate the same amount of information, but it is based on less etymological uh, veracity, as it were. You got your sea grapes. I got my sea grapes, Patrick. Nice. Um, so anyway, that's why we say octopuses. If you say octopi, it's fine. Again, as we mentioned, language is uh, an instrument of understanding. So if people say octopi or octopuses or octopodes and you understand you're talking about multiple of our suckered friends, then we're all good to go. GTG, as it were. GTG. Look at those. Look at sea them. Grapes. Look at these sea grapes. Um, Tell me about sea grapes. Well, no, the one thing that I was going to say before, um, just in case we do have uh, any any local folks uh, tuning in with us right now, Patrick, these sea grapes just look very, very different than uh, what we would call sea grapes over here off the coast of Central California. Um, because these sea grapes are these beautiful green algae that we are looking at right now. Our sea grapes here in Monterey, though, are red algae. Um, so the ocean provides, just like the land, both red and green grapes. <laughs> nice. Um, anyway, so yeah, uh, these are this is a beautiful little uh, green algae that we are looking at right now. Um, and uh, typically with, with sea grapes, inside of each one of those little balloon-like structures that you see on, on these, um, it would be filled with a, a mucus inside. Um, so these are little mucus-filled uh, sea grapes. Not Doesn't sound quite as delicious as, as your grapes on land. Don't recommend making wine out of them or anything. Um, but yeah, so we have we have red sea grapes, and these ones are green sea grapes. Do you have any other fun facts about uh, sea grapes, Patrick? Uh, just that our local red sea grapes are, um, one of them is in the genus Botryocladia, um, and uh, the Another inside of them being say. very uh, uh, mucousy, as you were mentioning, that was a word that I learned uh, back in the undergrad days, mucilaginous. Uh, mucilage being uh, a mucousy uh, substance inside there. So um, just in case you're ever, uh, you come down with some sniffles, uh, you can impress your friends, letting them know that uh, you have a rather mucilaginous uh, circumstance. Oh uh, my God, you. You Patrick. Go. What? Patrick. What? At Fruit Bat. I mean, this what? is a pun for for the books here. What's because they it. said that if you held these sea grapes up on a boat, would they be the sea grapes of raft? Oh, that's a good one. You know, I was I was oh waiting to say gosh. that if you happen to have uh, sea grapes with a, a sheep head nearby, then you've got the sea grapes of rats <laughs> um, is the pun that we usually say. Um, there so sea grapes of raft absolutely if it's up on shore sea grapes of wrasse if it's near 
a senorita or a sheephead. Um, John Steinbeck currently very pleased wherever he yeah. happens to be. <laughs> I I have to say though, Patrick, I I was always disappointed at all of the the crepe restaurants around the Monterey Peninsula because none of them are called the Crepes of Wrath, and exactly I feel like that was just it was right there waiting. It's for an them. oversight. Uh, yeah, you know, sometimes you expect <laughs> more of people, and uh, that doesn't always occur. Like uh, you know, wearing masks in public during a pandemic and uh, appropriate. Uh, punnery when it comes to crepe places you yep. know, it's all on that same <laughs> continuum um i did see a question over on a twitch uh from face yes you can eat uh these green sea grapes here in fact i believe that they are really popular over in uh korea and japan which is probably why they were included in the game here in fact yeah um, over on youtube sorry uh yeah. emily over on youtube someone uh yan lao anthony is mentioning that these are the japanese type and they're a popular food in okinawa and are eaten dipped in soy sauce yeah so. yeah 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 nice. um you know a lot of uh algae is edible and delicious too um this happens to be one of them so yeah absolutely 100 percent edible these these little sea grape buds here uh oh and we've got incurable obsession is over in japan wondering if they will see this uh i'll ask ask a, a japanese friend over there let it ask them if there's some sea grape little eatery spots i would love to have some i know myself yeah the, um so much kelp is uh is is used in in so many different types of uh, of cooking. We've talked about uh, giant kelp and uh, other things you can use to to spruce up your soups. Um, kelp's many brown algae uh, are uh, they have a lot of glutamates in them, um, and so they just they're basically they're an umami bomb for for your food there. Mm -hmm. um, and I yeah yeah we can talk forever about how great oh, yeah. kelp is not if only in the get... environment but people <laughs> people have absolutely been eating foods uh with kelp for um you know tens of thousands of years uh at least along our coast um so find some kelp out there if you can incorporate it into your diet it's uh super good stuff Ooh, another little spot another of garden, garden eel friend another garden eel um so just one quick thing about these little garden eels is that typically when you see them uh you wouldn't see the full length of their body like you are seeing right now usually you only see the first few inches of their bodies if you see anything at all they're pretty skittish animals um and they'll burrow down Whoa. into the sand uh, with just their little heads sticking up out of the water um and then they'll kind of come out a little bit more come out a little bit more and they look like a field of seagrass because there'll be a huge colony of them all in a little area so it looks like a whole field of seagrass i uh, just kind of swaying in the current there but if a predator comes by they all just go and duck right back down into their burrows so those burrows can be up to like 18 inches deep um, but usually you only see the first like six or so inches sometimes you know maybe like a whole foot of the of the little eel sticking up out of the water there patrick i heard you go whoa though so. uh, yeah no big no nbd but uh i have uh, another mollusk i think <gasps> it's a mollusk friend? i can't Wait, tell from the i can't you? tell from the design if it's going to tell where me that it's know? A snail. I'm behind you. I, I've, Wait, I've, did you swim further? I swam further down down coast. Okay. Um, I have either a snail or a hermit crab. I think it's a snail. I think we have a conch. I'm not sure. Oh, sorry, I trooper is getting. Trooper, trooper is, is very excited about known. this particular update. Hold on. Um, Wait, do you mean down like down the screen or up the screen? Because I was going up the screen. Because that's the direction up, that we were moving. I went up the screen from where you up were. The but, screen. but I'm okay. noticing plenty of bubbles that I did not see on my swim. I was closer to shore, I believe. Uh, this is, by the way, okay. an incredible update to be able to swim this around so this cool. far from the coast. Like, they really committed. Okay, further straight up. Straight up. From, straight from up. Right, can you swim up the river? <sighs> No, Can you okay. swim up the river? No, you can't. Are you a salmon? <laughs> I was trying to be. Oh, I was man. trying to channel my inner anadromous self here. Um, well, you know you got to hang out in that estuary to let your uh, let your endocrine or not your endocrine your uh, homeostasis uh, adapt to the salinity. 
Where did endocrine system come from? Where yeah, did keep you going. go? Uh, Emily, I'm lost at sea. Uh, I everybody, no everybody, idea can, where we you some, are. can we get some F's in the chat for? All Pat? I see are bubbles. Uh, are you one of the bubbles? Fs. Are you at the I'm, edge here? I'm over, but maybe over to the left from where you are. Uh, Pat is lost at sea. <laughs> I can't um, find you, buddy. It is now a mission so, to find Pat. I'm Pat. not moving. I have not moved. Pat, um, as as a diver, oh, I found you! Yeah. Oh, thank goodness! Oh, Yay. I was oh. so worried. This was not good buddy contact. No, by the way, everybody. no. So if you are a, if you are a diver, make sure that you. Uh, oh, I mean, this is actually really good. Um, this is really good. A uh, little PSA for you folks out there: if you happen to want to go snorkeling, free diving, uh, always have a buddy with you. And when you are uh, snorkeling. You want to go by a system of one up, one down. You don't both want to dive yes. down at the same time. Uh, you want one person watching the other person, make sure that they pop back up, uh, and then you uh, repeat that with, with your buddy. The reason being is that um, untrained divers, uh, snorkelers, and, and other folks out there can uh, have what's known as shallow water blackout. Um, if they happen to hyperventilate on the surface, if you uh, breathe real quick, you can uh, lower the amount of carbon dioxide in your um, in your bloodstream enough that you don't notice that you're running out of oxygen to function when you reach the surface. It's a very interesting thing. Your your need to breathe is actually based off of uh, carbon dioxide buildup and not lack of oxygen. So uh, what can happen, you know, it does, doesn't happen all the time. Um, of course, it you know snorkeling very safe generally. But if you are pushing yourself, if you're out there for a very long time, you can dive down and actually run out of oxygen uh, in your brain to keep you conscious on the way up. And that's when you have a buddy that just lifts you up above the surface and you breathe in a little bit and then you're totally fine. So just something to know uh, if you do happen to want to get into snorkeling, free diving, things like that, uh, you'll learn in your class if you take one. Uh, one up, one down. Always have a buddy out there in the ocean. Uh, so oh, I exactly. want to apologize for publicly breaking so many rules, <laughs> um, but I'm confident doing it when I'm free diving uh, in zeros and ones and not actually out in the ocean. Yeah, we had a couple of divers and some dive masters in the chat there who were yeah. who were panicking along with me there. Patrick. Oh, <laughs> totally, totally fine. I got a whelk. It's a whelk. You got a whelk. Look at its little perculum. That's so exciting. Oh. Ooh, operculum. operculum. Tell the folks what an operculum is. Operculum Emily. is basically like a little trap door that it can uh, use to cover up uh, what you would see as like the opening of a shell there. So an operculum. Um, is this nice hard, it's made out of calcium carbonate, the same material as the rest of its shell there. And it'll um, basically withdraw its entire body and then use that little operculum to kind of close the door to protect itself uh, from, from anything scary, um, whether that is someone picking it up, like Pat here, um, uh -huh. <laughs> or a predator, or um, just getting dislodged from a rock and... Um, you know, especially if you happen to be uh, a mollusk, a gastropod that is living in the intertidal zone. Oftentimes when the tide goes out, you will just close yourself up and cover yourself with that operculum trapping water inside of the shell with you so that you can stay nice and moist uh, while the tide is out. And then when the tide comes back in, you open that little trap door and, and you're good to go. Um, so yeah, operculum. And those are yeah. Those operculums that you're mentioning too, Emily, those uh, are used in jewelry. I know um, for yeah. uh, for some of the larger species there as well. So you might you might find some of those uh, out there. Um, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, the other thing about whelks, I just want to point out, is that in our area we have animals known as Kellett's whelks, uh, and those can live over 40 years. I believe they can live a very long time, many decades at least. Um, and they grow very slowly, but they are scavengers that you often find on dead carcasses of things. Well, I guess if you're a carcass, you're already dead, but uh, you get what I mean. The emphasis of you're definitely dead if you've got a Kelletswalt crawling on top of you. And they have something known as a proboscis that will go down a very long um, tube with a mouth at the end that they'll use to slurp up food. We actually have Kelletswalts at the aquarium. Um, at our touch pools, we won't have them... Uh, when the aquariums reopen quite right away, but we do, uh, we have had them in the past if you visited and saw those Kellett's whelks um, and they'll put their proboscis down and grab up little shrimp and it's really quite impressive what they're able to do. Um, scavengers, uh, Kellett's whelks are, and actually 
Uh, diving the other day, I saw a molted crab that had about a dozen uh, Kellogg's Welks all around it, slurping up delicious, delicious uh, crab juice there. I did also want to point out on Twitch that we had, um, oh, where is it? Yeah, Fiore uh, Seligia is letting us know a delicious recipe, Emily. It could be uh, Welk sea, uh, Welks with sea grape juice and sea pineapple and anchovy pizza. Um, huh. is currently the recipe I, that we've cooked up here. I got street. distracted by a comment over on Twitch who said that we have to name our Welk Lawrence, a pun on <laughs> Lawrence Welk, uh, okay. the, the famous American musician and television host. And oh, I have goodness. never been so delighted by a very, very, like, I mean, that, that aged me right there because none of the kids these days, hello fellow squids out there, are going to understand Lawrence Welk as a pun at all, but I am here for it and I that appreciate is, that it. That is awesome. I'm trying to come up with something related to, you know, if you want to use one of those operculums uh, in jewelry, you might have to break out, um, you might have to break out some specialized instruments uh, to be able to put uh, the operculum together with the rest of your jewelry. So it might mean that you end up with a Thule whelk. Oh. Does that work? Oh, that was a that was another stretch right there. That was I a long I'll, walk. Yeah, that, that was, was a, a long, long walk for a... a long walk. But a Thule, a Thule whelk would definitely be a carpenter uh, gastropod, right? As well, that would work. A Thule whelk. You got a bunch of tools. I'm going to stop that particular line of inquiry and swim and away. We're, and we're zooming out here. And we're yeah. going to go find some oh, more no, bubbles. My controller went to sleep. Oh, no, maybe we aren't zooming out. Oh, no, now we're just stuck treading water. Bye, Emily. By the I'm way. breaking the rules again. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is a very inefficient uh, method of, of, uh, of treading water. Oh, no, you're swimming away from your buddy again. Patrick, you are breaking I've, protocol. I'll never learn. <laughs> You are I'll breaking protocol. Oh, I found <laughs> bubbles. I'm diving. Oh, I found another whelk. And by the way, everybody, whelks are delicious. Um, <laughs> they are very, very tasty animals. I did lose but you But of course, again, if you though, are collecting Patrick. these animals, make sure you follow your local fishing regulations. Can you dive on top of the fish? I don't think so. There's no... no collect I, okay, I really did lose you again, Patch. I'm uh, over by the shore. You're over by the shore. I'm coming down to you. I see where you are. I'm over by the big rocks. Oh, I found you. Did you? Or did I help? Shh. <laughs> uh, by the way, everybody, uh, just if you are just tuning in, it's been about 52 minutes here. My name is Patrick. Uh, and I'm swimming alongside Emily. Uh, yeah, only 10 <gasps> puns. We've been going for an hour. Uh, Star I Princess know. Tally, we sorry. We had uh, an issue with the pun button. <gasps> Emily. I know. You're joining the Monterey Bay Aquarium social media team playing the new diving Hello. update for Animal Crossing New Horizons. <laughs> and with that, and with that Emily, who you got there? Star. We got a sea star, Pat. Pat <laughs> uh, and a, obviously, we have to name it Patrick. Yeah, obviously, uh, <laughs> named, uh, you know, after myself. Um, and I will admit that when I was working at the Seymour Marine Discovery Center over at the Long Marine Lab, uh, over when I was at UC Santa Cruz, there was a Sea Star outfit that they absolutely put me into. And I walked around scaring kids at fairs uh, as a six foot uh, Sea Star with a stomach that could come out of a, a belly button mouth hole that would digest food at a distance um so i have been patrick c star yes uh, and i can tell you that that is certainly pat yes patrick c star um i'm also very impressed because the program actually calls it a sea star and not a starfish which yes, well is done. awesome i know that we like to talk a lot about how as long as people understand what you're talking about language is just a tool to communicate ideas and if you say starfish and people know what you're talking about it's fine to say starfish if you say sea star and people know what you're talking about it's fine to say sea star but i mean we call them sea stars at the aquarium because it's more correct than starfish since they are indeed not fish at all but instead echinoderms um so i'm actually just a little tickled that uh that uh we have sea star in game as well Absolutely. here yeah um but you know uh, importantly if so if one of your friends does say patrick starfish or that it is a starfish um 
pointing out that it's not a fish is maybe less I important than pointing out what it does and all of the other cool things because a uh, sea star is of course not a ball of fusion suspended by its own gravity in the ocean either so to call it a star is also a rather um uh, a, a whole lot of liberties taken there as well so um we are very excited that it says sea star there instead of starfish because that way we can jump straight to something being in the kinoderm uh, yeah. instead of having to explain how it is not a fish but again if someone says starfish just move right along mm -hmm. we know what we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> um so this little sea star here it's like you mentioned patrick is an echinoderm uh, echinoderm means spiny skin um so these these echinoderms that includes so sea stars you got your sea cucumbers in there your sea urchins and what am i forgetting patrick sand dollars that's what i was forgetting so sand dollars yeah. sea urchins sea cucumbers and sea stars they are all echinoderms well, there's, there's feather stars and feather and stars the too. other one crinoids as well but yes those are the main ones that people are going to be seeing yeah uh, most of the time in our area yeah 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 um what kind of fun facts do we want there's so many fun facts about what, echinoderms what, what oh, type does it appear to be choose? to you in in game uh I mean, if it was in our area, I would call that a bat star. Yeah. I don't know what uh, what it would be if it was a Japanese uh, version, because a lot of the developers or the developers are putting in a lot of uh, uh, Indo-Pacific and yeah. Japanese species. But I'm going to call this a bat star, right? Yeah, I would call it a bat star, just with very small wings there. Um, but yeah, this little echinoderm here. Oh boy, I'm trying to choose. I mean, we could talk about madreporites. We can talk about their water vacuolar system. We can talk about their tube feet. We can talk about how they eat things by... Oh, Emily, sorry. Yeah? I've just noticed over on Twitch, uh, I think we have to turn off the Nightbot command thanking people for watching the Kelp Force cam. <laughs> <laughs> I of just course we that. can. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Okay, it's disabled now. Okay. Only an oh. hour into the stream, we caught it. It's, it's totally cool. Fine. It's cool. It's good. Uh, well, over oh, over on uh, YouTube, we got someone saying the Bat Stars genus is Pateria. Uh, the creator of SpongeBob was also a marine biologist. I wonder if that's where Patrick uh, got its name. Huh. Maybe, but you know, Pat the Pateria, Pat the Pateria, Pateria the Sea Star, Pat the Sea Star, and it's short for Pateria and not Patrick. That could be the the name of the Sea Star. What do you think? Uh, Pat. We Pat, Pat the sea star instead of Patrick the starfish, and Pat the sea star is short for Pateria. We could do that. We could do that. What do you think, chat? Is that what we're is that what we're naming the sea star? Pat short for Pateria, and also short well, for Pateria Patrick, of would be P T E R because it's swing, isn't it? Pateria, P A T. I thought it was Pateria. Is it? Uh oh. Hold on. Uh oh. I believe it's got the A. It has the A? Okay. Then yeah. Pat. Yeah. We'll call it Pat. Nice. Nice. We nailed it. Okay. Uh, well, Emily, you mentioned the water vascular system and the madreporite. Uh, you could do a twofer with that if you wanted to. I mean, really cool. Good. Um, so let's talk about how these sea stars move around. So uh, sea stars have a water vascular system where they're actually drawing water into their bodies and using that water to actually move them themselves um part of that system is the madreporite which is this little like almost like a calcareous opening uh on the sea star usually on its to what it looks like us it's back there it's this little opening that brings water in and almost like um almost like using like little eye droplets uh using that water to control its tube feet and control its muscles to, to move around. Um, so it has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these little tube feet on the underside of, of their bodies. Um, and each one, like a little eyedropper, um, can kind of grab onto things and then let go, grab onto things and then let go, grab onto things and then let go. And using that water vascular system, almost like a little wave, um, it's able to, to crawl around and to grab onto things. And it's just such a, just a, incredible the way that they can do that. Um, but yeah, the madreporite is, is on its back. The, the mother poor the madreporite there um, is what's drawing in all of that water. Did I, there you go. Did I, did I, did I do it? 
No, you did it. And uh, the <laughs> the mother pore there, the madreporite, is on the back or the back side, the the, the side facing up. I should yeah, say. the side that's because, looking at us right now. Yeah, yeah, because the thing the thing with sea stars is that they don't have a back and a front. They have a mouth side and a non mouth mm -hmm. side. So the <laughs> it's the oral and the ab oral surface. So the oral surface is uh, the way that Emily is currently holding. Um, the sea star there. So the mouth is where is where Emily's hand is. That's where the stomach comes out and helps liquefy food mm, um, and delicious. then it slurps uh, a slurp back up. But that means that the side that you're looking at is where the water is coming in. That's where the mother pore is. And that is also where the sea star's butt is. <laughs> um, so if you've ever touched the top side of a sea star, that is also its backside. Um, the oral and aboral side there. So uh, the anus of the sea star is pointed right at you at the moment, just so you know the next time you're out to touch pools. I'm not sure why we're bringing up this particular <laughs> bit of information, but now you know. There you go. There I you mean, go. it's not a Friday stream unless we mention butts at least twice. And we've done that, so we're oh, good. <laughs> so, and... Uh, over on YouTube, uh, L, uh, ML, uh, and a master. Sorry, I can't really pronounce it. But uh, if it's a bat star named Patrick, then it's Batrick. Um, but it's uh, Pat, Iria, the sea star over there. But Batrick is a good one. Batrick is also a good one, too. Nice. Woo! Well, I, I am just cruising. This is so much fun. This is so <laughs> much fun. This is great. Thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. If you're there on Twitch, if you're there on YouTube as well, thank you so much for spending this afternoon here with us. We're playing some Animal Crossing New Horizons. Oh, What'd you get, Emily? man. It's just Echinoderm City over here, Patrick. What? I what got, do we got? What do we got? sea urchin. Is it a pencil urchin? No. It looks like purple. Oh, okay. Yeah. A little purple sea urchin. Purple. Yeah, there you go. I can I can say words. Nice. Um, look at this little friend. Wow. Wasn't even urchin for it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, if you had stepped on that one instead of caught it, you'd have to go to urchin care. Hey. Hey. Um, yeah, so, I mean, purple urchin is something we can talk about here. Mm -hmm. They've become very popular along our coast. Uh, purple urchins, I like to consider them they're sort of like the kelp forests reckoning uh the red urchins and the purple urchins that we have here along our coast can live for um uh, for uh the red urchins that it's thought over 200 years they can live for uh a long time over a year without eating they're incredibly prolific they're very difficult to uh, get rid of uh, very few things eat them in abundance and you really need a community of organisms all working together to keep the sea urchin population in control. And back in 2011, there was a major, major recruiting year for purple urchins along our coast. And then we had a lot of bad years in the row for the kelp. And so along the north coast of California, you might be aware that the kelp forests have uh, really struggled and all but disappeared in most areas, uh, largely at the chomping jaws of purple urchins there. In our area, we've also had uh, zones with purple urchins clearing out some of the kelp, but it has not been the same uh, circumstances as the north coast. So there's still lots of kelp in our area. The reefs over here are a little bit patchier. They're a little bit more uniform up north. And we also have sea otters and sea stars and other uh, organisms around here that kind of help buffer against the worst of uh, the urchins, at least so far. Um, so you'll hear a lot about urchins in the news if you're here in California, but generally speaking, sea urchins are, uh, you know, they're a part of that community. They're a part of that kelp forest. And in particular, um, they're a part of human uh, culture, uh, culinary culture for a very, very long time. They're known as uni when you're eating the females' ovaries, the gonads there, and it's sort of like, um, sort of like ocean butter. It's really, really an amazing bit of, of food. Um, so if you ever hear uni uh, in your uh, in your meals that you might be looking into, uh, that is sea urchin roe, the the gonads mm -hmm. there. Absolutely delicious, mm -hmm. very tasty, um, and also that fishery is something that is struggling with the lack of kelp there as well, because when there's no kelp, the urchins don't have big, mm -hmm. uh, thick gonads for um, for harvest. So there you go. Little something there about urchins. Go. We know them well here at the aquarium. Uh, uh, but uni, if you're ever thinking of 
ordering some, that's what you'd be eating. Absolutely. Um, Patrick, we did have a request over on Twitch to talk about uh, yes. the Aristotle's lantern. In oh, go for sea it. Urchins. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Um, It'll so, be a very enlightening discussion. Hey, from yes, Aristotle's it will. Lantern. Um, I promise that I won't make you do any philosophy to talk about it at all. Well, um, and don't tell too many other people because then you'd be an Aristotle tale. Uh, hey. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> uh, so the Aristotle's lantern. So we were talking about the madrepore right before being a calcareous structure. Um, any kind of derms. Sea urchins are also going to have a madrepore, right? A little calcareous, uh, you know, inflow for the water there. But an Aristotle's lantern is the mouth basically of the sea urchin. Um, so it would be on the underside. And that's what it's using to chomp away at, uh, the stipes of, of kelp. Um, uh, Oh, I just thought of a good joke there. Hey, Hey Patrick, uh, yeah, Emily. Hey, Patrick, if you have an allocated amount of kelp for sea urchins to eat, does that mean that it has a stipend? Oh, 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 oh. oh that was, <laughs> that was, Emily, that was stipendous. Oh, that thank was, you, thank that you. was stipendous. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I got distracted by my own pun there. Uh, so Aristotle's lantern. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what it's like to be me. <laughs> this is constant. Um, Aristotle's lantern are basically, um, it's five calcareous plates um, on the underside of a sea urchin that it moves back and forth to create this kind of rasping mouth that it's using to chew away at the kelp. Um, if any of you are fans of Dungeons and Dragons or of Stranger Things and uh, know the Demogorgon, um, it kind of looks like a Demogorgon's face. <laughs> these little kind of like, oh, they almost look like triangles or petals, uh, these little calcareous plates that it uses um, to, to chew away at, at the kelp or whatever it's eating, the scrape away at algae. Um, so it's this little rasping mouth that Aristotle's lantern, those five calcareous plates put together there. But um, yeah. yeah, anytime I see a Demogorgon, it, I'm just like, oh, it's an Aristotle's lantern on your face. Um, but they don't like open up like the Demogorgon. Gorgon space. Anyway, I'm getting too deep into to, to Demogorgon and not into, into our sea urchin here. But uh, well, sea urchin. I mean, people lantern. people are there saying. I mean, we've got Ames to please saying that they're unsubscribing because of these puns. That means that they're Demogorgon <laughs> at this point. Uh. <laughs> are they not our demogorg graphic that oh, we're, whoa, that we're trying whoa. to reach here i talk don't know about a, talk about a clumsy portmanteau there oh, that boy. was very well done oh boy wow um, oh, i know oh that was good um any other fun facts that we want to share about our search i mean there's so many things so patrick um yep one thing that I did want to just pull up here um, for, for you to enjoy is that the Critterpedia on the phone uh, has Whoa, now been a, updated. Oh, it it has a, and of course, it has a mollusk to represent it because mollusks are wonderful. Of oh, but my look, there's, goodness. Let, uh, let's see. One, two, this is, there's by the way, this 40, is the most. Yeah, 40 new animals that we can This is the most get. legit video game that has ever been created. Ever been made. Oh my By gosh! Far. Here, click on the sea star real quick. Let's look mm. at it. I like the sea star. Oh, right that's so good. Yep, that's a bad star for me. It's not. It looks more like a pyramid star, uh, based off of there being those like little star pattern there on it. So it's probably more like a cookie cutter esque type yeah. star. But I'm gonna call it a bat star. Yeah, it's fine. It's a pat star. It's a pat star. Oh. Wait, I want to look at the I want to look at the octopus under. Here. See, those are the two spots that I was talking about um, that I Ooh, saw. Ooh, that's very oh, obvious. Oh, that's such a good drawing of this. Wow. Too. Okay, wait. So hold on. Does um, we have several different types of two spot? Uh, there are dev many octopuses out there that have two spots on them, and we have at least two different types of um of two spot octopuses along the coast of california but what kind of two spot octopus exists off the coast of japan i wonder that it could potentially be hmm because we have octopus bimaculoides oh that's interesting well anyway those anyway. spots there they can flash them uh and we have those off the coast of california i've seen some two spot octopuses off the channel islands myself that's very, I'm very so exciting. Delighted. Yeah, Defa Bimac, the Allen Pro. Yeah, we'll go go with Bimac. Bimaculoides. 
Uh, that's so exciting. Okay. Um, anyway. Well, Emily, I think we, I think we gotta, I think we gotta go find some more critters. Okay, I found another one. I'm gonna go dive for it. Okay, you're We still haven't met Pascal, and so I'm hoping that uh, we're gonna. Celestina was mentioning that we might not be able to meet Pascal while the uh, island is being visited. Oh, oh so beans. that's my bad. That's okay. I would rather have you here. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. You wanna dive you... for this one? I will. Whoa, I missed it. Oh no. I believe in you. You've got this. What I get? Oh, I got another. Yeah, another whelk. Oh whelk. Whelk. Oh whelk. I'm a whelk of knowledge. Hey. If I've got more information about this. <laughs> more puns. Always more uh, puns. Can we can we get some uh, get some W's in the chat super quick for the developers of this game for incorporating <laughs> the single greatest uh, game mode that has ever been devised? Uh, thank you so much. This to the Animal so Crossing neat. folks out there for your clear love of nature. Uh, this is really, really awesome. Ah, I got an urchin myself. This is just so cool to just be able to swim around here. This is really, really awesome. Oh, I just heard the sound of you need to redeem your nook miles, Emily. And I know someone's going to start. Someone's <laughs> going to get an Someone's going to have an issue with the fact that you got the blinking nook I miles. I know. I know I do. Hold on. We'll do this. Um... More barnacle buds. Uh, you can eat barnacles, by the way, for you folks out there who might be. In, there are um, different types of barnacles. There are barnacles that have the hard shells around them, and they kick their legs out from inside that shell. There are other barnacles called stalked barnacles that you'll often see in photos of humpback whales hanging out uh, on them. Um, and uh, those stalked barnacles... Um, also known as gooseneck barnacles. We have them here locally, and uh, they're a delicacy uh, in certain parts of the Mediterranean and um, in other places <laughs> near the ocean, but I've, I know them from the Mediterranean. Um, and the uh, the stalk of the barnacle can be cooked up and uh, tastes kind of, you know, like a little bit of crab meets a snail. Um, and, uh, yeah, so gooseneck barnacles. Basically, what we're, what we're saying is that... Uh, our relationship with the ocean has a lot to do with our relationship with the ocean in our belly as well. <laughs> it's very true. I mean, hence our work with seafood. Water. Yeah, exactly. So uh, when, you know, 70% of the world either relies on seafood as their major source of protein or as livelihood, then it's an important thing to talk about. You know, it is. And that sustainable seafood is really crucial. Um, and seafoodwatch.org is uh, something we've been working on for 20 plus years now, learning about sustainable seafood and what we can do as consumers to make sure that we can have our fish and eat them too. Oh, oh I got another achievement. There we go. What did I get? <gasps> oh, Emily. Oh, Emily. Oh, no. Oh, Emily, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm going as fast as I can. I'm get out of so here. Get out excited. of here. Where are you? Marco. I'm so excited. I am Marco. down coast. I'm down coast by Marco. the net. Marco. Okay. I'm down coast by the net. I'm swimming as fast as I can. Okay, that is one game mechanism. Lots of W's in the chat for uh, creating this game, but also F's in the chat F's for F's swimming F's so, the, so slow. F's in the chat for speed. <laughs> I, know, I know everyone is supposed to be uh, zenning out and enjoying uh, themselves, but you can't collect the critters fast enough for us. Um, uh, so I'm over by I'm over by the uh, by the net, Emily. By the net. By the net. By the net. Swim swim away from shore. Swim away. Swim away. Away from shore, and then uh, I'm gonna be due south. Due south. Once you get to the net. Yeah. Dun, 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 I have. Gonna get, I'm so excited that I I found this. I mean I I. Uh, I, I, I love you, Emily. I'm, I hope that you find one of these as well, but uh, I Did feel like it's important squid? for me to have found this one. Uh, and uh, people will just find out what that is once, <laughs> once Emily gets here. <laughs> In like eight years. <laughs> Where are you, five Pat? Hours, five, five hours, hours later. Five hours later. <gasps> Yeah, I got oh a new to brink. I got gosh. a new to brink. I got a new to brink. It's oh a taste Oh my nude. gosh. Um, this is awesome. Uh, this is. Oh a, my god. 
This is a type of nudibranch. I believe it is a Chromodorus. Uh, I have seen these in Indonesia. Uh, nudibranchs, yes, uh, everybody uh, keeps telling me to send nudibranchs, and we just did. There it is uh, directly to all of you. Um, nudibranchs are an amazing type of marine slug. They are uh, incredibly beautiful animals because so many of them are so potent uh, themselves. They feast on some of the most nauseous organisms that you'll find in the ocean. They eat disgusting sponges and bryozoans and stinging hydroids and anemones. And some of these animals, not this one, but uh, some nudibranchs will even take the stinging cells of the hydroids that they're eating and put them in their own bodies and they become a venomous organism uh, right off the back. So we've got a, a nudibranch here, uh, a chromodorid, I believe is the this particular type. Uh, there's two main types of nudibranchs. There's the dorid type where you can see the little yeah, gill plume little off tough. the butt uh, with the little uh, rhinophores up front. The rhinophores are what look like rabbit ears. Those are actually noses. Um, for them, rhino, like rhinoplasty, you think about your nose. Uh, so rhino, rhinoceros. Uh, so the nose bearing organs, they're rhinophores up at the front of the slug and then the butt plume of, uh, of gills uh, that is not protected by anything, hence nudibranch, hence naked gills is what that means um, for these particular types of sea slugs. The other type, instead of a dorid, uh, is an aeolid, where they have gills kind of all over their bodies, and they look very uh, poofy and fluffy. And these uh, animals are some of my favorite ocean animals. I do a lot of underwater photography on the side, and uh, I make a tasteful nudes nudibranch calendar every year uh, filled with nudes here from uh, the Monterey Bay. It's one of my favorite uh, animals to find. They're so colorful. They're so beautiful. They're so food specific. Um, so anyway, a little bit about myself, a little bit about this slug. And Emily, I'm so excited. We have Nudibranch <laughs> it's on so stream. This is so great. Cute. I'm so uh. stoked. This is the, literally any video game that has a Nudibranch in it is a game of the game of the it's year. It's a game that we can uh, get behind. Yeah. You get, we can get behind and with no pants on because it's a Nudibranch. <laughs> it's a nude. Yay. Oh. oh, this is so exciting. I I'm I'm just gonna take a nap. Uh, if you want to keep swimming, Emily, I've I've succeeded. <laughs> we got a sea slug. It's kind of salty about that. Hey. Yes. Oh, oh, that's so cool. I'm so excited. Oh, we got to find a mola so mola. Cool. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, we, we do also, have to find a mola. It's also past so no four. Naps so yet. Yeah. There could be vampire squids. I just keep on catching jellies over here. So. That's Not that tight. that's a bad thing. We love you, jellies. I'm so sorry. If that came off at all in the wrong way. This is so great. Um, yeah, so actually earlier today I saw a nudibranch um, called a barber slug that was going up a tube anemone and it decided to snip off some tentacles of that tube anemone. And when it latched on to those tentacles, it got pulled down into the tube of that anemone. You may have seen a similar video um, that we have uh, on our or that we've uh, tweeted and posted previously. Yeah. I've got a whole bunch of sea grapes out here. But yeah, new to Branks are some of the best. Oh, I can't carry anything else. You can drop some stuff off on the beach if you want to. What should I drop? This is awesome, Emily. This, this is, is so, great. so neat. Although I do feel like they should uh, sell flippers. In the little some we dive, should, they, dive yeah. fins in the shop. Yeah, not very good swimming with just your with just your boots. <laughs> My Emily, on. Emily, yeah. I had a I had a question. Uh, I know that we yes. can't. Um, I know that we can't deliver anything to Blathers while I am on the island. Um, is that something we should do? Where I would leave. Uh, the island and then we go to the museum and then you can you can yeah. hand off some of these new animals to see how they populate or should we do some fishing first or I guess we could leave that up to the chat yeah so chat um, should we should we fish again for Amola we had Sarah who has been diligently kicking butt and making uh, making some fish bait for us to to once again try for for a mola mola here should we drop some stuff off at the museum should we keep on swimming and diving uh, we'll probably go for about another like 20 minutes or so for the stream here right patrick oh i mean i've got i've got time uh okay we can go a little bit longer then yeah maybe since like, we started we, we probably late. got another yeah. like 45 maybe okay 
Yeah, we started late, so now I had to. I know I had to leave early <laughs> last time, so uh, <laughs> now we got cleared our calendars for it's today. It's Friday. It's it's a holiday tomorrow. You know, we we got all the time. Okay, so uh, I'm seeing a mix of I should leave so that Pascal can so that come Pascal to the island can show up. And oh, then you could see Pascal, too. and then we could, and then we can go to the museum. You can offload those animals, and I can come back. And then, meanwhile, while you're doing that, I can try to multitask and maybe try to fish on my island for a mola. Okay. No, that wouldn't work. Well, you could catch it, and then you could come show it off here. I could, yeah. Uh, well. Or we just fish for a mola. Ooh. Sorry, I've got a shark fin here on the shore. Oh, yeah? Okay, hold on. I just dove. It's, Up by the it's lighthouse. It's jellyfish again. Okay, hold on. Up by the lighthouse. I'll Up wait for Up by the you. lighthouse. That's okay. It's going to go a lot faster this time <laughs> because I'm just going to swim back to shore. There we go. Oh, I can move nice. so much more quickly. Yeah. Pascal will only come if you catch a scallop. Yeah. Oh, please turn and look the other way, shark. There it there goes. Go. Oh! oh. I don't, shark. I've never seen this one before. I never saw oh. one of these before. Hey. Look at that. I don't think we've had this one on stream. <laughs> That's so jawsome. It is jawsome. It's a saw shark. It's perfect for my hat. It's jawsome. It's so jawsome. Look at that, everybody. Do Ooh, you want... that's so cool. <laughs> do you want another joke, Patrick? Uh, sure. Yeah, how do you cut the uh how do you cut the ocean in half? I'm not so sure, Emily. How? Oh, with a seesaw. Hey. <laughs> she see <laughs> wait, um seesaw. I I was trying to go see conquered. <laughs> She came, she saw, she conquered. Uh, Veni, Vidi, Vici. I don't know how many different types, how many different ways we can have uh, Veni, Vidi, Vici puns in this particular <laughs> in this, stream. But yeah. the Latin nerds <laughs> out there, I'm sure, are very appreciative. Cool. I didn't even realize there was another shark that uh, we hadn't seen yet on the stream. There it is, everybody. There saw is. shark. Saw very, shark. very cool. There's different types of uh, sawfish. Uh, you might refer, um, you might hear them referred to as they are a type of shark. Um, really incredible animals. Um, I don't really know where you find them around the world. We don't have any in our area. I know they're more tropical. Yeah. Um, Indo-Pacific. Can't carry anything else. I got to swap it with something. I'm going to swap it for one of my whelk buds. Bye. So long. Well, this is very exciting, Emily. This is. Um, so we're going to go fishing for a little bit? I think so. All right. I'm uh, gonna... I need to figure out where here. I'll just drop a bunch of stuff in front of your house. I think. That's right? just I can do that? fine. Yeah. No, I can't drop anything while I'm at your place. I can oh, only show can't? it off. Nope. Hmm. Do you want to sell some stuff? Oh, here I can drop my iron nuggets <laughs> and my branches, <laughs> so I can catch two things. Do you want? Do you have duplicates of stuff? Because then you can go sell them. Uh, I do. I have whelks. I'll just release some whelks, you know. Okay. Uh, but yeah, maybe let's let's do some let's do some fishing. So long, fair whelk. <laughs> I'll feed their sea in. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that there you go, everybody. Uh, come to top right, and we'll find another fin to shadow. Is what uh, mod extraordinaire. Sarah uh, is. Oh, that's left. I know my directions. Uh, are sea stars different from brittle stars? Is a question that I oh, see that was, there. That and was another echinoderm that we didn't mention yet. Oh. Yeah, brittle so stars sorry. are ephioroids, uh, which means snake like. So they are echinoderms, uh, but they're a little bit different in that um, they have snaky arms that slink about to move them along their water vascular system. Uh, being mostly used to move their tube feet around, but they don't really use their tube feet to walk around. They use spines in their legs to uh, slink around, and, and um, they're very light-sensitive animals. 
uh, incredibly light sensitive animals. And you see a lot of them buried in the mud out here along uh, Monterey Bay. Um, by the way, let's get some dubs for Sarah. Yes, again. Let's get some dubs in the chat for Sarah. Double we dubs. Sarah over here. Here, we'll, maybe we'll go up over to where Emily is to have full visibility of the awesome epic Sarah. Thank you so much, Mod Sarah. You're the best. Oh, oh. I don't want to move it. Oh, no. Stop moving. Okay, I believe in you. Shark, just, just like turn a little bit. Oh, you could probably just pull. Just turn a little bit. No. I don't want to. Don't do it. Don't scare it. It's just... Ugh. Here, I can cast. No. Okay, I, I am. It's gonna turn. I am. I'm going to... Oh, okay. <sighs> oh, good job. Oh, no, no, no. Now, of course, it's moving. Why? Okay. Go, Emily. Go. After the disaster of last stream, I'm terrified. No. Okay. We got this. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> It's a oh, whale it's shark. A whale shark. Okay. okay. Um, we would normally be very excited. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for pointing out this fin, but Yay. we are looking for a mola. Mola. The mola. Mola. Donde mola. Okay. Let's see. Um, so I think we need some fish bait, right? Yeah, there is quite a bit. I know that I made about... 50 before the stream My and goodness. i'm pretty sure all, that all dedicated look at it look, <laughs> look at, at this, this pile picture. look at this pile that we have made um i know that sarah has also been thank you sarah this. let's get some let's yeah. get some emotes and some so Ws much for love. Sarah. last time we went through 140 bait and we did not catch a mola mola hopefully it will not be the same case this time but no, that's not, it. Oh, and that is not up for debate. You know what I'm too. trying to say? It's not up for debate. Oh. Um, but I can drop things off in my house. Okay, I'll be right back. Because my okay. inventory is very full, too. It's okay. I'm just on the pier, uh, scaring away fish. Um, so for everyone who is uh, just tuning in, once again, welcome. Thank you so much for being there. My name is Patrick. I'm one half of the social media team at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Uh, the better half, Emily, is the one running away right now over to her home. Uh, to we're playing house. some Animal Crossing. We started doing this with the closure of the aquarium uh, due to coronavirus. Um, and we've been able to spend a whole lot of fun time with all of you folks out there talking about marine science, uh, interpreting the natural world. And we are so, so excited to be diving into another episode of Animal Crossing. But this time, excuse me, with the diving with the update. Diving that we have uh, where we actually get to explore Amazing. the ocean and we look forward to bringing in some special guests to talk about diving and the animals that we might see out there uh, it's very very fun stuff so thanks again uh, for all of your support everybody out there who is subscribed who um, has donated in stream uh, thank you so much for your support you're really helping the aquarium out while we are closed and we look forward to being able to do this exact same kind of thing in person again very very soon so once again thanks everybody all right. Okay, let's And see now here. for a word from our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> we are not sponsored. If you'd like to sponsor them. <laughs> hey, Nintendo. What's up? It's your Hi. friends, Emily and Patrick here. Um, we, we, we very much love your video game. Um, hit oh, us I got a shark. <laughs> Yay. What kind I of shark? I got a shark at the pier. I'll wait for you, Emily. Okay. I feel better about this. Um. No. You'll notice uh, as well that Emily is very tidy in her I... uh, in her inventory. Um, something that I am not. Uh, we are diametrically opposed when it comes to our organizational <laughs> skills and interest. <laughs> it's it's very true. Um... Oh, if uh, I see Fiora Selegia was wondering about uh, sending fan mail, if you wanted to do that, we do have that physical address of the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Uh, you can feel free to send fan mail over there if you wanted to. Um, here, I'll put that in the chat. That's okay. Now people are just watching me very OCD clean things out of my inventory. I apologize. We'll we'll get back to uh, no. This is this is we'll part get of back the game. to real content. There we go. So yeah, if you wanted to send fan mail, go for it. Uh, be totally, 
Totally fine. Uh, I'll also, be able to... sorry, go yeah. go for it, Patrick. No, I was just going to mention uh, we'll be able to pick that up at some point in the week. We're not exactly sure what is happening at the moment with uh, Monterey County and um, whether or not the aquarium will be reopening on time. But we should be reopening uh, July 9th for members and July 13th for the general public. If that were to change, we'll know more on yeah, Monday. We'll know more on Monday. Yeah. But yep. uh, yeah, you can in the meantime, feel free to send that uh, fan mail if you had any over to us over there. That'd be awesome. Um. And just in case you want to get yourself a Jawsome hat like the one that I'm wearing and some of the other designs that uh, we've made in Animal Crossing for you, um, I have the uh, our creator code I just put in the Twitch chat and I will copy that over uh, and put it in the YouTube chat because I have not programmed my stream deck to do that for me automatically yet. Here I like your stream go. deck song. Thank you. It was inspired, you know? Yep. Um, there we uh, go. Here, if you come on the pier, I'll see if I can catch this shark. Oh, okay. Hey, Sahara. I need to look at Sahara's stuff still today, too. Right. Um... Yeah, oh, I've got sucker. some regrets. It's a remora. It's a remora. Um, Faeus over on Twitch. Uh, will you continue to do content like this even after the aquarium reopens? Yes, absolutely. Um, we are going to continue to play Animal Crossing, continuing to cover um, all of the wonderful ocean content here. And um, we're going to continue to invite other scientists on to talk about the, the natural world here and Animal Crossing. Um, so continue to expect different streams like that from us. Um, we even have the Getty Museum that's going to come on and talk about the art uh, that you can get for your museum uh, here in Animal Crossing. So we're going to do that too. Um, and then we're looking to play some other games here on Twitch. Um, we have a whole list of games that we submitted and got uh, approval to play them, but we don't have the money to buy them yet. Yay. So hopefully one day soon, um, if we can get things cleared up, we'll be able to play even more awesome um, ocean thematic games uh, here on Twitch. I think the next one that we are are going to try and do is Abzu. Um, Woo. So. Oh, and there's also a new game that just came out, I think, called yes, King yes, of Crabs. Yes. King of Crabs came out. There's also Beyond Blue. Um that one too. So Beyond Blue and Abzu, I think, were the two games that we asked if we could play um, right now to see if we can get those in the budget. And then as as the aquarium slowly recovers, uh, we might be able to continue to play more. So, yeah. Um, and thank you again to everyone who is subscribing to these streams and who is uh, subscribed and following us over there on YouTube and on Twitch here and um, using your bits over here on, on Twitch. All of that money goes straight to the aquarium, straight to helping support over our programs, helping to feed the animals, keeping us going right now. So we I, I know that we say it a lot, but we really, really, really do mean it. Uh, that, that It just means the world to us um, to have all of you here hanging out with us and supporting supporting us and supporting these two weird marine yeah. biologists trying to be gamers here yeah, here on Twitch together. <laughs> doing doing our best uh, over here. And uh, yeah, just uh, maybe something for the, the YouTube folks that are tuning in right now. Um, we're actually pretty close to 100,000 yeah. followers over on YouTube, and that'll actually unlock a lot of different things for our account, like being able to do uh, subscriptions over on YouTube. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to do fundraisers for the aquarium, and there's just a whole bunch of other cool things that come with 100k over on we youtube are, so, so um, also for the folks that are in the twitch but uh especially over on youtube if you let your friends know to uh subscribe to the monterey bay crimes channel we'll be able to do more things sooner um as well in terms of mm -hmm. uh, cool live streams and everything uh with everybody so um that's just something else just plugging uh if you happen to be watching uh, like and subscribe tell your friends to do so as well it really helps us out we're very close to 100k and once we uh, reach that then it just unlocks a lot of creator stuff for us to be able to do more cool content so um Yay. yeah uh, um the other thing stuff. that i did want to mention um twitch to the folks who are subscribed to us over there on twitch um 
which we are up to 384 subscribers on no Twitch and 385. I'm sorry. We just got a new one. Whoa, so smash that um, like. thank you so much to our 385th new subscriber over there on, on Twitch. Um, that uh, the emotes that you have right now, um, I am, uh, we have some new ones like a Bafka emote, uh, that we were going to try and upload here, um, at the beginning of July. So when that happens, that means I have to take some of the emotes away in order to upload the new ones. So if all of a sudden some of your emotes disappear, um, don't worry because new ones will be coming right back. So, um, yes, look forward to that Bafka emote there. So those new emotes probably coming in the next week. So, yay. Awesome. And then when we hit 100K over on YouTube, then we can actually have emotes over there too, I believe, Patrick. I have to look into that more. I'll I figure it out. Too. Emily, Emily, I'm a shark. Oh, you have a shark. Okay. There's a shark on the pier. Okay, I'm coming. There's a shark on the pier. Sorry. There's a shark on the pier. It's whisper content. No. I will, I will. Emily, we got a shark on the pier. I, I got it. I got it here. Tip down. Tip down. I have to hear the audio cue so I don't beat. Yes! Oh my god! Oh my god! That's right, everybody. That's pro gamer moves oh from your god. boy. Woo! We did it. Yes! <gasps> yes. Ah, gups, that wasn't the wrong one. I didn't want that emote. Come on. No, it's this G one. Oh god, G I will get there. Gups. Sarah, Sarah, come over here. Sarah, Sarah get over here. here. You Sarah, were part of this. Sarah, look. You were part Sarah, of this look. team. This Mola Mola team. This is a team. This was thanks to your, your contributions. <laughs> yes. 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 Oh my God. Yes. It's beautiful. Yes. So everybody, welcome. To welcome to the best stream ever. We're so excited. This is so great. Uh, everybody, uh, you're looking at the ocean sunfish, AKA Mola mola there's several different mola uh types out there in the world but this is the one that we have commonly all throughout the world's oceans mola mola is one of the most superlative fishes that you will find anywhere in the sea um, they are essentially a box fish that wanted to be a sea turtle and made its way from living on reefs and out into the open ocean it is a pelagic magical wonderful animal um, that uses its dorsal and anal fins, you can see flapping around there, to swim about. There's a type of swimming known as a strassiform swimming, which is similarly found in box fishes and uh, puffer fishes, which is in the same group there as these molas, which are tetraodontiformes, is the fish group. Molas can grow to be over 11 feet across in diameter. They can weigh 5,000 pounds. Uh, the heaviest is the bumphead mola, uh, which is more commonly found uh, over off of Japan. Um, that is uh, Mola Alexandrini. There's also Mola Ramsii. Mola Tecta is the hoodwinker Mola that we find here in the Monterey Bay, uh, as well as in the Southern Hemisphere, the hoodwinker Mola, because it was described in 2017. Mola Mola is the main one that we find out here in the Monterey Bay, and there are a bajillion of them out here as they're coming into the bay to feed on jellies. Molas are commonly known as sunfish because they come up to the surface, lie down sideways to warm up, it's thought, because they dive down into the deep sea to feed on squids and uh, jellies and crabs and other things on the seafloor and in the water column. They are so big that they are their own zip code for over 40 different species of parasites that live on, in, and under their skin. Their skin is six inches thick. They can have 300 million eggs uh is the idea for a mid-sized uh, ocean sunfish mama uh i'm i've just said i'm going through all the emotions mola. over here yeah uh, this is, yeah this is truly one of the greatest uh animals and we are one of the only aquariums in the world and the only one in north america to ever have these animals on display so we have had them at the aquarium previously uh emily i'm going to stop talking about all the natural history information there because uh, i think it's time 
for us to share some personal mola stories. But oh my god! In particular, we have this mola that has just breached out of the ocean and into our lives, and I couldn't be, I couldn't be happier. This is the yeah. Greatest day. We did it. <laughs> yeah, yes. I am. I am absolutely like going through all of the all of the emotions over here, just. Your ecstasy turn. and Your turn. joy and and everything and um oh my gosh i <laughs> can't believe it happened i cannot believe it i happened. can't believe it happened we went through how this many is the best bait? day 140 140 last time, last time. <sighs> and you, it was what like the third fish <laughs> on this stream we did it it's yeah I, it's because of it. the update it's because of sarah it's yeah the two, it's it's serendip serendipity. Serendipity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. If you want to listen to me t talk about the time that I saw a mola breach at the aquarium, I can do that again. Let's um, do it because we actually have a mola to show off. <laughs> we do have a mola to show off. Okay. Uh, very good point. Chat le has let us know that we do most importantly need to choose a name for our mola oh um so i want to say it's a tuna j all attached but <laughs> oh i mean we could just name it j <laughs> we could just name it j j the mola we um, could, or no what if it was what if it was someone called the aquarium <laughs> <laughs> what if we called it baby whale <laughs> Baby, wh baby, baby whale, whale the mola. Baby whale the mola. Oh, but, that's my favorite one so far. And it, its catchphrase is someone call the aquarium. <laughs> 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 someone call the aquarium, everybody, because we've got a mola. Oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, I am just overjoyed right now. Um, yeah. Oh, was, uh, there was a call for the mollus story. So I I uh, apologize to to the folks who have already heard this one, but um, I'll do a I'll I'll do a quick sum up so that it's not ten minutes long like last time. So, um, the gist of it: uh, Patrick and I both uh, used to lead tours uh, for the Monterey Bay Aquarium, uh, and uh, on this one particular tour that I was leading, it was a romance tour, so someone was getting ready to propose to their special someone. Um, and it was the end of the tour. We were going to our open sea exhibit where we happened to have a beautiful Mola Mola on exhibit at the moment. Um, and when we got in there, um, right, right before the person was getting down on one knee to propose to, to his significant other. Um, oh, <laughs> Patrick, you're... I brought my fishing rod. Yeah, don't worry. I have like 10 of them on the beach because I made it's a okay. lot for I'm going to bring back our case. sunfish friend. Um, oh, look at it. It's so beautiful. Anyway, right as this person was getting ready to go down on one knee as we entered the open sea, our mola in there um, just very delicately was just swimming along and then turned its nose up to the surface, moved those big old fins and just launched itself out of the water as it breached and came splashing back down just blessing blessing this union between the two people that was about to happen and i mean the two of them were crying for other reasons and i was crying because of this magnificent mola just just this magnificent mola yes. moment that that was happening before my very eyes and it's, um, it's important for everybody to know that these fish can swim and they can swim very, very well. Yes. Um, there's there's yes, a yes, lot yes. of there's a lot of blasphemy on the Internet saying that these fish are useless, they, that they don't know what they're doing, that they don't know how to swim. We've tagged them and we found that they can navigate the coast just fine and they can migrate many hundreds of miles. When they're young, they have to be nimble enough to try to evade seals and sea lions and other fishes that might be trying to go after them. They can breach out of the water like you were mentioning, uh, Emily. Um, these are no slouches yeah. in the fish department. You just yeah. to see them when they're little mola popsicles when they come up from a deep sea and they're trying to yeah. warm up on the sea surface. So there will be no disparaging no. of mola swimming behavior on Never. this stream. Never. Thank you very much. 
Um, uh, MSI says, so you could say the Mola Mola Stola Stola the Shoa. Um, absolutely. Oh, um, that's, so <laughs> that's very good. Um, uh, and uh, for the folks asking, did they say yes? Yes, they did say yes. Obviously, I mean, you have to say yes when you see the Mola jumping and just blessing this moment behind you there. Um, and, and yes, uh, the, the other thing that I, I did want to say, Patrick, um, moles can actually swim so efficiently that, um, I know that there are scientists out there, um, not just scientists, but people who are creating things out there to mimic the swimming motion of the mola. In fact, there is a, um, basically, uh, I think there's a kayak and a paddle board um, mm. out there that are is using this movement of the mola mola's fins um, where you can kind of like pedal along in your kayak and it has a little fin underneath the kayak that kind of propels you through the water. It's like, little, I haven't seen this. It's so cool. It's just in like the last couple of years that, that it came out. Um, but, but yeah, it's that, 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 um, you know, if humans have thought of it, nature has already done it and they've done it a million times better. Like mama nature is absolutely incredible. So like this sunfish oh, yeah. here, like evolutionarily, one of the most modern fishes that we have in our ocean. Right. And so, you know, it's doing something on its own and doing it very, very well um, to the point where now people are looking to it for inspiration to make our lives better. Um, and in that fact, happens with a lot of things out there in the ocean where you're taking yeah. that bio inspiration to, to create so many uh, incredible inventions. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're doing so well, as you say, Emily, that, um, you know, you're doing so well. You got this, bb wheel uh is how wheel they're doing um, yeah with it i tried to get the the name back i know there. i know you no, tried but you're thank you <laughs> you're no you're exactly right emily and uh like that's really something that we should point out too um is that uh you mentioned that it's one of the like newer fish species out there yeah i think only four million years yeah is it's that, pretty is young yeah it's a very new type of fish actually so a lot of people who come to the aquarium will say Oh, like, is that, you know, a very ancient fish? And actually, it's one of the more modern ones. Uh, one of my favorite mola stories from the aquarium, just very quickly, we had a young white shark on display back in the day. The aquarium is the only aquarium. Uh, the Monterey Bay Aquarium is the only aquarium that successfully exhibited young white sharks. And my job was to stand on the side of the window and let folks know, hey, the white shark's about this big. It's came from here. It's going to go out here. We're doing this science. And people would come up and they'd be like, cool shark. Uh, what the heck is that thing? And they would point out the 500 pound <laughs> mola mola in the in the in the exhibit. So um, truly in a class of their own and can clearly outshine uh, white sharks in terms of their um, their care, their charisma yeah. uh, when you see them in the yeah. in the ocean. So um, yeah. Patrick Kai over on YouTube did just ask a great question. Uh, do we know why they breach? out of oh. the water and um while we don't know exactly why i wish that i could get inside of the very tiny walnut sized brain of a mola and find out um i i think the best guess right now is because um these fish are highly highly parasitized um i think on the last stream right pat you said there were 60 different species of parasites 40 40, 40. 40. okay yeah not quite i mean it's still a pretty significant amount I mean, at that point yeah, who's, counting, you know? you know, who's counting after 40 uh, might as well be 60 so 40 right. species of parasites that uh can live in and on a, a mola here um in particularly a, a lot of them just pile drive themselves into the skin of, of mola which can be up to six inches thick and so uh to knock a lot of those parasites off um that's kind of the best guess that we have as to why mola's yeah. breaches they go up out of the water and they land really really hard basically just belly flopping but it's more like a side flop back down onto the water to help knock off some of those parasites there yeah it could, it, um, it's definitely that for for the large ones and also you'll sometimes see them breaching when they're being chased by sea lions also out here when they're much smaller so um, could be just a, a case as well as they're heading towards the surface of not being able to put on the brakes before they go airborne uh, yeah. But yeah, trying to knock off parasites there. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to, to say, Emily, we have uh, someone over on YouTube mentioning uh, MLM Animasters mentioning that apparently the Chinese name for sunfish literally translates to toppled wheel fish. So a baby wheel isn't actually too far off. 
up. Yeah, th that's pretty for, good. That's pretty awesome. That's what, pretty amazing. Some serendipity some there. I also know that um, that uh, the German word is uh, schwimming, schme, schwimmer Kampf, Kopf, the swimming head fish, basically. <laughs> if you if you speak German, the swimming head fish. Um, and I also know that certain people call them moonfish. moonfish uh, in Norway, yeah. I believe they're called moonfish instead of sunfish. In Norway, I believe, in a, in many languages, they're they're called moonfish. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Fiore Siligia asking, should I be holding it if it's covered in fish lice? Uh, no, our vet, <laughs> uh, our um, veterinarian, Dr. Mike Murray, uh, recommends wearing gloves if you're ever yes. handling a sunfish. Yes, it yes, is yes, absolutely. pretty gruesome. Um, a little while oh. back, someone said that uh, people need to make uh, life-size mola mola pillows, which would be absolutely amazing. Oh my and goodness. and while they're not life-size, you can get mola mola plushies from our uh, online web store. I dropped that link in the chat um over on twitch a little while ago i'll, I'll do emily, that here too again um emily, yes i want i want an 11 foot sun i know pillow. i can <laughs> you know what patrick i will sew you an 11 foot sunfish okay, cool. pillow awesome. uh awesome. you buy the fabric and i will make that for you um uh but yeah barring that uh our <laughs> online gift and bookstore has some <laughs> they do um smaller but very adorable they are more like the the size of molas that we see out here uh, very commonly um another question that we had over on twitch patrick was uh is there any information or photos showing or detailing the life stages of a mola and i know that there are some really cute photos of molas out there when they are are oh, very yeah. very young you know just hatched um and and you can actually tell um, just how closely related they are to oh, the, this is what I get for not uh, doing anything. <laughs> Sorry, the screen is going to be dark here for just a second because my controller went to sleep and therefore That's okay. the I screen the went to sleep. There we, we go. No, around. there we go. There we go. No, this is worth it. It was okay. worth my screen going dark there for about five seconds. Um, but uh, yeah, when you see them after they they first hatch, they basically look like a tiny little puffer fish. They're just basically this ping pong ball covered in spikes. Um, very, very, very tiny ping pong ball covered in spikes. Um, but you can really see the, the family <laughs> resemblance there uh, between puffers and, and molas when they're very, very young. But beyond that, there are not a lot of uh photos uh, their their life stages aren't very well documented um because they they are pelagic animals and, and especially as broadcast spawners you know mola mola is they're releasing their eggs into the water and those eggs are just kind of drifting along in the current and going wherever and um you know we see them when they're very very large if if we're lucky we see them here in monterey when they're juveniles about the size of a dinner plate um but Everything in between is kind of a mystery, and that's kind of one of the reasons why uh, we have molas at the aquarium is because we're we're trying to learn more about them. That that time between dinner plate size and adult and adult five thousand pound size mola. Yeah, the, and um, our aquarist Tommy uh, Knowles, who you may have seen on some of our live streams about jelly, is actually went on an expedition out to uh, Johnson Atoll and found some of those larval. Uh, molas, those larval sunfish. So they may go all the way out there before they make their way mm -hmm. back to our area. How cool is that? Yeah, out in the middle of nowhere, Pacific. It's amazing. Oh. Boy, I'm I'm an emotional wreck. I'm I'm cratering That's from so cool from finding this mola Ugh. after I don't know how long we streamed the other day, an hour and twenty minutes with absolutely no <laughs> no <results>. luck at <laughs> all. <laughs> I think it was even longer than that. <sighs> yeah. Oh boy. Boy, I am. This is so great. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm so glad you were uh, able to be here live for for this. Yeah, uh, we had like moment. 225 people over on Twitch and and 60 people over on on YouTube watching us sketch this Mola Mola live. So I'm really glad that they were uh, they were able to share in the joy and the excitement. Oh, look at it! Look at oh. the sunlight reflecting off it's of its highly Let's parasitized the game. skin. Yeah, let's just let the game play out and ride us off into the sunset, Emily. Yeah, <laughs> we'll just let the game go dark and call it just good. Just let the game go dark. Yeah. Oh, uh, one thing I did want to, uh, oh, someone was mentioning, um, yes, uh, the caudal peduncle, you can actually see it on the model. Uh, it's um, that little fleshy part that's between the tail fin and the rest yeah. of the body there. 
so that's the coddle peduncle there on the on the mm -hmm. sunfish um oh, and there's another another bit of sunfish lore i was gonna mention oh uh, if you were wondering what happened to the large sunfish that we've had at the aquarium, uh, some oh, of them, yeah, yeah, all of them yeah. get released out into the wild. One of them, at least, was released to the wild using a helicopter because it was so heavy, weighed about 900 pounds before it was released out to the Monterey Bay with satellite tags. So those sunfish are temporary residents at the aquarium. We don't currently have a sunfish uh, at the aquarium, but um, yeah, that's where they've gone. Um, don't oh. worry, chat. I know a couple people uh, over in, in Twitch chat were saying, "Wait, don't let the game play out or 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 go dark, because then we'll lose the save of of you catching the mola." So don't worry, we, we we definitely won't let that happen. Um, uh, and then um, at Fruit Bat, um, at just on point with the puns today, said that uh, we watched them reach their gola gola. <laughs> a very oh, good one. Oh, oh, very quickly. Very, very good quickly. one. Um, so, chat, uh, this is what I wanted to mention. Um, if Emily ends up catching her mola and I have my mola there, then we would have a group of mola. And there is no official term for a group of mola outside of a, a school of mola. And so, what we would like to offer to the world is that the plural noun for, uh, or collective noun, excuse me, the yes. collective noun for a group of mola is a guacamola. Um, so please spread the word to your friends and family. Uh, it is a guacamola for the official um, official group of mola. So a collective of molas is a guacamola. Please tell everybody we have control over this moment in time and the language that we use, guacamola, spread the word. All right. Guacamola. Um, uh, good question over on Twitch. Are the sunfish's uh, fins both independent of each other or do they work as one? They are independent of each other, so they can move one without necessarily moving the other. So that top and bottom fin can work independently, which makes them uh, much, much more maneuverable in the water. Um, great questions. Great questions all around. Great stream all around. Best day. We get to go diving. We get to go searching for molas. It's uh, what a good afternoon. We did it. Oh. All right. Oh. Well, let's see here. I'm uh, never taking this out of my pocket. Yeah, never do. I mean, maybe catch one more. That way you can have a pocket mola. And ah, then... I want a pocket mola so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I want a pocket mola. Ah. <gasps> Did you catch one? No, but uh, Sarah has taught me that we can cannonball off of the pier here. Hold on. Yes! Oh, wait, wait, there wait. we go. Yay! Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Let's see if you catch this reference. Let's see if you catch this reference. Should I stay in the water? Uh, stay in the water, but near okay. the pier. Stay, stay in, in the water, water, but near the pier. Near the pier. Let's see, let's see if YouTube and uh, if Twitch catches this reference. Ready? Everybody, I have a very important announcement to make. Cannonball! <laughs> <laughs> it would be fitting to have an Anchorman reference, considering this is such an aquatically themed stream with anchors and all. <laughs> I'm, a, oh. I'm a friend without pier. <laughs> We did it. We did it. Oh. <laughs> I, I like that not under sea cop used four different emotes in two different lines to have a disappointed, angry face. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. Hold on. Wow. Wait. Wow. So do you be and then? Oh, that was close, but no. Okay, Sarah's like making some very much pro gamer move jumps What's off of this pier. How's she doing it? I don't know. Wait, well, do, I do gotta it again. do it again. We will watch. Whoa! What? See, she's doing like a backflip. Okay. Oh, I did it. Wait, how did you do? How did you, gotta, you, you run gotta sprint and press and a. a at the last second? Okay. Do a flip. <gasps> we're flipping. <laughs> we're flipping out this over here. This is so cool. We're flipping out Animal over here. Animal Crossing, yes. Oh no. 
Well, this is fun. <laughs> is this just the end of the stream now? What? Yeah, everybody <laughs> who's still watching the stream, what, did you expect more information in marine science? <laughs> no. It's in marine science? We're, we're playing the video game now. three big old nerds <laughs> running off of a pier to do backflip cannonballs. Booyah. I just want to say, get Sendy. Get Sendy, everybody. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Oh, we got uh, Fayez from uh, Twitch staff. Thanks for tuning in. Yay. We've had quite a few Twitch staff tuning in this afternoon. So hello, everyone. Right. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope this is the kind of content <laughs> that you want to see uh, on, on Twitch. Oh, so good. Oh, this is so great. This is so awesome. Uh, well, I don't know if we can top it. Oh. Honestly, I don't know if we can top it, Emily. I got to redeem myself. Hold on. Let's see it. Uh, does anybody know what the vampire squid looks like in terms of a shadow? No. I did not redeem myself. That's okay. Um, it's not a shadow, so it is diving. So maybe it that's what diving. we do. We go diving and we look for a vampire squid now. Apparently uh, it's rare. Well, in any case, chat, this has been fantastic. It's been it's been wonderful. Um uh, Fiore, how was my first swimming in ocean experience um, in game or in real life? <laughs> Both. Both. Um, in game, absolutely amazing. In real life, I was terrified. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I do remember that being a kid and swimming in the ocean and uh, especially as a kid from Arizona where I was very, very used to pool swimming and I was... I mean, from a very young age, um, probably, I mean, from, since I was a baby, I was in, in the water. Um, I have pictures of myself as a baby with my parents swimming in our pool. Um, but, uh, when we went to the ocean for the first time, I did not appreciate the waves and basically made um, either my parents or my sister hold me the entire time. <laughs> and I was just like, no, thank you. This water moves. I don't like that one bit. Um, now it's a different story. Now, now it's definitely a different story. But yeah, that first time experiencing the ocean after... Um, growing up with just pools and and rivers and and, and lakes and stuff i was uh not a fan <laughs> oh, okay uh pro tips from the twitch chat if we see any sand being kicked up underwater at a fast rate that means that the animal is fast and likely a rare animal so we gotta look for the sand being kicked up okay i just had to i just had to chase after a mussel so I'm really confused <laughs> as to like. I mean, it's because it was muscly, you know. Mus muscling it along. Oh. You can tell that we are just like emotionally spent because oh, yeah, we've no, both I'm, gotten I'm just very after quiet. Welcome everybody to. Uh, we've run out of. <laughs> Welcome to, to talk your about. new meditation. Oh, Patrick, wait, come by me, because. What? Where are you? I I have no idea. I'm by a rock, but but like way out on. But you the found side. some giant kelp. I found some kelp. Uh, I'll never find you. I know. <laughs> now I am lost at sea. Oh, there's a big Here. rock. There's a big rock over to the to the left. So if you go up on the beach and then find a rock and then swim out. I'm doing my best. I hear splashing. No, come do south. Do south. I found you. Hey. Yay. It's some giant kelp. We've got some kelp. Yeah. Yeah. This is awesome. What do we want to talk about with giant kelp? Or should we save it for the next stream? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could. 
But uh, Giant Kelp is, uh, is, I mean, gosh, there's so much to talk about with Giant Kelp. Emily, okay. it's almost 5.30. Yeah, it is, it is almost 5.30. <laughs> I just looked at the clock. I know how we were like, oh, we'll go until like 5.15. It's 5.30 now. Uh, but that's okay because we caught a mole and we went diving. And yeah, let's let's save some kelp facts for next time. Um, yeah, I think that let's let's swim back to shore. No, back no, you shore. know what? We'll just end it here in the water. Let's do <laughs> we'll it. We'll end the stream here in the water. I feel like it's appropriate uh, to end the stream here in the water with everybody um, on this epic day of the new update to Animal Crossing, where they have brought uh, two marine scientists the most joy playing a video game in the entire world. Um, I hope that you all had a good time here with us. We sure had a good time uh, hanging sure out did. with all, all of you. Um, had to get at least one more pun in there. It was a pretty low pun count for, for the two-hour stream. Only 33 puns that that, nah, are, okay. that we officially counted over there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I hope that you had a great time. Uh, we caught a mola. We went diving. We went swimming around. Um, there's still so much more to see and 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 get. And so next stream, uh, we'll go. Uh, we'll drop things off in the museum, um, and and maybe look for Pascal. We still haven't seen Pascal, Patrick. We so right. next time we're gonna talk about Pascal. We're gonna talk about seaweed and kelp, and uh, and yeah, have a great time and. Um, yeah. Is there anything that you want to say, Patrick? No, other than uh, thank you so much, everyone, for su your support of the aquarium, for watching us play Animal Crossing, for diving into this new update with us today. I uh, hope you have uh, a safe and healthy uh, 4th of July weekend, and uh, we hope to see you again very, very soon on this stream. And uh, we are in no way done diving into this Animal Crossing no. world. It is so, so exciting. Um, we would keep going if we had if we had the mental capacity, but after seeing a sunfish, I mean, sometimes <laughs> that's it. Sunset, that's it. Game yeah. set. Game sunfish. Game set sunfish and match. set. Match. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry. I, um, oh yeah. Over on YouTube. Make sure to thumb up. Uh, thumbs yeah, up. Like, like subscribe. Like smash that. those bells. Do all that stuff. <laughs> over on Twitch. We're professional. Subscribe. Yeah, we're professional streamers. Subscribe. Buy our merch. <laughs> I've, yeah, I dropped that link in the chat before. By the by, by the stuff. By the and yeah. Um, be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. We love you all very much, and uh, and we'll see you again soon. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.